copper deficiency is a real thing. Okay, I'm not trying to scare you, that's not my style, but you do need to know the symptoms of a copper deficiency. Minerals are wacky, and this day and age, mineral deficiencies are so prevalent, simply because the soil in which our food grows is depleted in minerals. So different people with different genetic makeups end up developing deficiencies for different minerals, right? So for me, I go through magnesium like crazy, so I need to take in a bunch of magnesium. But I also know people that need to take a bunch of zinc. I know people that deplete in potassium really fast, but there's also those that deplete their copper stores really quickly. So you need to know the signs and symptoms so that you know when it's time to increase the copper intake a little bit. And by the way, you can increase your copper intake simply by just adding a little bit of dark chocolate into the mix, okay? It's really pretty easy to get copper. You just gotta make sure you're getting it from the right sources. Now, with copper, the biggest difficulty, I should say, is that copper and zinc balance each other out, okay? So they're antagonistic, but at the same time they work together. So if you take in too much zinc, it blunts copper absorption. If you take in too much copper, it blunts zinc absorption. So we have to be really, really careful that we're not just willy-nilly adding copper into the mix because we have one or two of these symptoms. The symptoms that I'm gonna lay out, I highly recommend that you wait until you have three or four of these combined before you start supplementing additional copper. Hey, do make sure you hit that red subscribe button and then hit that little bell icon, that way you know whenever I'm posting new videos and going live. Also, uh, check out Juve down below in the description after this video. Really cool stuff. Okay, so Juve is a red light therapy company. Red light therapy is gaining a lot of momentum now because there's a lot of clinical evidence backing it. But basically what it is, is it's a way for you to expose yourself to these red lights that trigger the mitochondria within our cells to activate different energy pathways because our cells are receptive to light. It's just like when we go outside, our bodies know that it's light out and it activates more energy producing products in the body. So red light does the same kind of thing. So anyhow, I just want you to check them out after you watch this video because it's kind of along the same lines of things we're talking about. Okay, so with the body, we have to look at minerals and just the food we consume like making a recipe, right? We always have our proteins, our fats, and our carbs, but then we have different minerals that we add into the mix, which are gonna be like the spices on a recipe. And some spices will enhance other spices. For example, adding a little bit of something sweet usually enhances the salty taste of something. And adding something spicy usually takes away from the sweetness, right? So we have different spices that cancel things out. The same kind of thing happens inside our body. It's a delicate dance. It's an orchestra of different things. So let's talk about this for a little bit. Since copper and zinc balance each other out, we're gonna keep this in mind. The first thing that I want to talk about in terms of a symptom is going to be intense fatigue, particularly uh, midday, okay, a little bit earlier in the day than you might otherwise feel it. You know, we all get the kind of three o'clock, four o'clock little fatigues, but we're talking a little bit more around the, the world of noontime, right? You see, copper promotes iron utilization within the body. Most people think that they're anemic when their iron levels are low just on a blood test. That doesn't necessarily mean anything. What we have to pay attention to is iron that actually gets taken up by the cells. Now, copper is required for iron to get utilized by the cells. So if copper is low, then iron isn't getting absorbed. So it can throw things off because then you go and you get your blood test done and your iron levels look high, but you're actually anemic because the iron levels are just elevated in the bloodstream. They're not actually getting into the cells. So it's actually a copper issue that you have more so than iron in that rate. Now, if we don't have iron getting into the cells, we're not getting oxygen. So then the red blood cells aren't able to really do their job. We're not getting the oxygen. We're not actually getting energy. Now, we also have to remember that copper is required for energy production in the first place. Okay, so we're talking pretty intense fatigue. We're also saying like, if you were to break into a sprint or start working out aggressively, would you get winded really fast? That's a good indicator. Okay, the next thing we have to talk about, the next symptom, cognitive decline. Okay, so we have what's called a copper-zinc homeostatic balance within our brain. Now, they've even gone so far in research worlds to say that there's a metal hypothesis with Alzheimer's and dementia. Okay, so they've literally said, even in research papers, that one of the potential causes of cognitive decline with dementia and Alzheimer's could be the fact that our metals are out of balance, triggering this whole just trickle effect in our brain, right? So copper is responsible for something really important in the brain, a process known as the glutamatergic process. Okay, so we have GABA and we have the glutamate cycle. Now, they're both important. The glutamate cycle is the main excitatory process within our brain. And if we are low in copper, 
then that side of the spectrum can't get activated, okay? So we don't end up having the sort of excitatory response. Our brain just isn't lighting up, so it's not triggering a signal. So if you're feeling like you're just, I, my memory's going, I'm just getting dumber, like right? what's going on? It could be a sign of a copper deficiency, right? Okay, now another one we have to talk about is coordination. Are you losing coordination? Now this isn't just a long-term thing. This can happen fairly abruptly. Like you're noticing, okay, I'm fatigued, I have cognitive decline, and how come all of a sudden I don't have coordination? Like even when I'm walking, it's like I can't walk on a straight line or my hand-eye coordination is out of whack. Okay, this is a common thing with a copper deficiency because copper supports the proper myelination of our nerve axons. So what that means is we don't have the sheath that covers the outside of a nerve, so we're not able to send the signal properly. So when our brain is trying to say left foot, move forward, perhaps it's telling the right foot to move forward. I mean, maybe not that extreme, but the point is, is it throws off our coordination. So when you start getting all of these things combined, that's when you know you're having an issue. The next one is you're feeling cold a lot and you're noticing that your metabolism is slowing down. Maybe you're gaining weight. See, normally when we look at the thyroid, we look at the big three. We look at iodine, selenium, and zinc, okay? However, we've got to remember that wherever we focus on zinc, we also have to focus on copper, okay? Because we might have enough zinc, but what if we have too much copper? Or what if we have, you know, too much zinc and not enough copper? Okay, so that's what we have to think about. Okay, so we're focusing on getting enough zinc to support our thyroid, but in the process, we're inhibiting the absorption of copper. So we have to increase our copper. So it's something to be paying attention to. You can become what is called functionally hypothyroid, where you don't realize that you have a hypothyroid issue, but you do, okay? We just need to be paying close attention to that. So if you start noticing, hey, I'm getting cold all the time and my metabolism is slowing down, it could very well be a thyroid issue. Basically, your thyroid hormone isn't able to attach to the receptors on cells because it doesn't have the proper zinc copper homeostasis, okay? So it's kind of a complex one, but it's still something that we have to add into the mix. This next one is probably my favorite because it's one of the telltale signs. It's paleness, so poor complexion, getting really pale, but also a little bit more of a rapid graying, okay? So if you notice that your facial hair is starting to turn gray, or maybe your head hair is just starting to turn gray a little bit rapidly in conjunction with just poor complexion, it could be the case. See, copper is required by the rate-limiting enzymes that ultimately uh, work with melanin. So what ultimately ends up happening is we have something known as tyrosinase, and this tyrosinase is involved in that process. So if we don't have the copper to support the tyrosinase, then we don't end up able to refresh our skin, really. We don't have the melanin coming through, so we're not getting that color. So a lot of times we see the opposite. Like with zinc, for example, if you're deficient in zinc, you get red, you get more flush. If you're deficient in copper, you get more pale. Again, kind of working on that opposite spectrum there. Lastly is going to be neutropenia or just feeling ill all the time. Neutropenia is just a fancy word for basically a suppressed immune system. Again, we don't know the specific reason, but we do know that zinc and copper are both involved in the production of stem cells at a rapid rate for fast recycling uh, cells, right? So hair cells, skin cells, immune cells, they all recycle at a really fast rate, which means that they suck up a lot of our mineral activity. Well, zinc is required, but copper is also required for that homeostasis, right? So if we're out of whack there, we're not able to create the stem cells that create white blood cells. So therefore we end up getting sick. Okay, so you can see when we're looking at fatigue, we're looking at coldness, we're looking at cognitive decline, and lastly, we're looking at that coordination. You can see like if you have three or four of these, it's a pretty telltale sign. But if you have one or two, eh, that's not enough to justify loading up on a bunch of copper and jeopardizing your zinc absorption, right? So you just have to be paying attention here. So pay close attention to it because at the end of the day, it's all a delicate orchestra that creates the music of life. So I'll see you in the next video and thanks for watching.